We moving to Shameless now. And you brother did watch this last episode of Shameless, correct? Yeah, I did get a chance okay. to check. So let's talk about the person, in my opinion, y'all might disagree, who stole the show. I actually have a clip of this young man that stole this episode for me. Whoa, I can't do that either. What, share my lunch? No. So it's okay for these underprivileged kids to starve because they don't want to eat the slop you give them? Until they pay their lunch debt. That's all they get. Now close it down. To donate food for my family's kitchen. Please, please, please. I'm just one man trying to make a difference. I won't take up any more of your time. <laughs> damn, that's my boy. Damn, damn, that's my boy. That's my boy Liam right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Shameless Season 11, Episode 2 was a pretty decent episode. That was one of my favorite parts. So you got the one black kid in the house. He's out here trying to capitalize on a bad situation. Right. In America, yeah, we did have... We did have these districts, Republican districts, might I add. I didn't find not one, and I looked this shit up. I didn't find not one Democratic district where they was withholding lunches from kids who couldn't pay their lunch debt. I looked it up when it was happening. And they're recreating this scenario with Liam. So Liam decides, hey, we got enough peanut butter and bread in the house. I'm going to take some and I'm going to sell them and give them to the people who can't afford it, right? Because this lady, she's giving them lunch, but she's giving them that government cheese. And if you grew up in me and T Streams and Larry era, they used to give out this damn block of cheese that was like, <laughs> it was toe tapping. I mean, it was a block. And she's making them these damn hard ass butter sandwiches and then giving them water. So Liam is just basically trading his peanut butter sandwiches for whatever they got to try to help the people out, and you saw that speech. Larry, you first. What did you think about that scene with Liam, the entrepreneur, the Black Lives Matter mask? Man, I was loving it. He was he was getting it. Dude's always got a hustle. He's always He's got, got a good, it. clean yeah. hustle on him. Yeah. I felt bad for those kids, not just because of what they had to eat, but, man, they were straight shaming them. They had them with those stickers that said lunch debt. Yeah, man. I was like, look. I was like, man, it's like they put a scarlet letter on them or something. And Larry, they was doing this. This was something that was done. This, this is they took this directly from some districts that did it. They did this was done in Massachusetts. Speaking of which, one place, yes, they done this. I mean, that's what. Could you imagine how embarrassing that must be as a kid? I mean. I remember, I remember when I was in school, there were kids like one of my neighbor, my neighbor, he used to be on um, his parents, I guess at some point, I don't know if they just didn't have money or something, but he was on one of those, one of those programs, like a reduced cost lunch or free lunch yeah. or something. So he used to just go up there where everybody else would go and, um, and give him, you know, too. you would go up there and give him your money, your 30 cents or whatever it was for lunch. It was, it was 35. I remember right. like it was yesterday. Yeah, he used to go up there. He would go up there and sign his name and get his lunch. And everybody knew all the people that signed their name to get their lunch were on this program, that poor people's program, whatever it was. So they used to be embarrassed. I can only imagine how terrible that is if you end up with a damn sticker on you that says lunch debt. Man, that would be horrible. And you know, kids are brutal too. Kids are brutal. Yeah, man, he's strange. What'd you think about the entrepreneur known as Liam? Well, you know, this was my this honestly, man, this was the very first time I have even watched this show. Uh, okay. after I hit you up and you told me I went ahead and, and, and watched it, and uh, I actually, I actually like the young fella, you know, yeah. uh, the, the statement that you know, I didn't know that this was pulled from like uh some type of realistic situation of sorts but uh the way the way they pulled it off was actually you know was actually neat it was it was one of the the one of the few scenes that that really made some uh some straight genuine sense to me mm-hmm. uh, that that wasn't you know uh just too comical but something that that actually uh really has some type of true significance to it and uh, you know 
I'm, I'm going to get a chance to check out some more. I'm going to get a chance to check out some more of the, uh, some more of the episodes and, and try to look back and get, get a little bit more of the backstory. Cause I, I've, I've always overlooked, uh, always overlooked this show, but I found it quite, in, I found it quite entertaining mm-hmm. uh, with the development of characters and everything. But uh, I tend to like the little guy. Yeah. It's, man, it's a great you, show. If you man. have it's the first episode, you have, you Boy. have eleven seasons or ten oh, other yeah, seasons you get to enjoy, man. I'm cool. I'm kind of jealous. I uh, me too. Man, man, I wish I had ten seasons of it right and, now. It, and and this is the type of series that is entertaining enough that you can go back and watch it twice. It's that yeah. good. It's yeah. that good. Now, Larry, we gotta talk about the main character, <laughs> William F. Macy, <laughs> and he goes into business this episode, ladies and gentlemen, with yeah. Kev. <laughs> And Veronica, man, now, ladies and gentlemen, this this Veronica, yeah, that, she's a blazer. That Kevin, he is dumb as a bunch of bricks that been shattered on your driveway. She, as <laughs> if William F. Macy's character is, is trying to do a split, Veronica's like, hell no, nah, we we splitting this three ways. And I didn't know, but we should have known, Larry, that he's a hustler. He's always he been is. a hustler. But I didn't know he knew how to cook marijuana because Kevin V, they're doing marijuana legally in their shop and their supplier has run out. So well, it's not exactly legal, but you know what I'm saying? You know, what I'm saying? I mean, because their bar is supposed to be shut down. They shouldn't right. even be having anybody in there. And then right. they've got the gym next door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then they got the gym next door. But anyway, the marijuana is legal in Chicago, but they're supposed to be closed. And their supplier is gone and they need Frank's help to get the marijuana. And Frank is promising that he can also make their their goodies taste better. So they they get get Frank. They go meet up in the cut. Frank buys it from a crackhead. Frank goes in there and makes the most delicious brownies with marijuana you can ever make using his secret recipe, which was (laughs) Use butter. Did you see that, Larry? Right. Use infuse it with butter. He did a yeah. He put the weed in there and did a butter reduction in there with the weed. Yeah. So and (laughs) and and then they start selling it at the shop for double the price that they would normally sell, and it worked. And so as we move on through that story, that's that premium. The man, you got that right. That was that primo man. He had edibles. (laughs) He had brownies. <laughs> the nigga had lollipops. He had everything. Frank yeah, had it man. all. And eventually, they made good money. And Frank decides, you know what? I want to make my cut higher because I've done everything. And I'm thinking to myself, bruh, you still using our shop for your commerce. And so Kev and V decide they're going to cut him out and go back to the crackhead that they first got the marijuana from only to find out Frank them bought her out and now he's going to do a 70 30 split with them. Larry, I give it to you first. What do you think is going to happen with that business relationship? Man, part, part of me, like part of me doesn't <laughs> feel bad for them at all because as shady as Frank is, uh-huh. he was actually sort of being legit with them. He was like, look, this is, this is what we're doing. And they were just like, because he's Frank, they tried to gank him, and and, and I get why, because dude is right. shady as hell, but they should have just played it straight up. They should have just been like, look, man, here's the deal. Let's go ahead and keep it. A Let's third. go ahead and keep it one third, one third, one third. Here, right. you know, and just tell them, look, this is the this is the thing. You're you're doing some of the cooking, and we're and we're p- providing the place for you to sell it. You know, okay. you're not gonna go sell your stuff off okay. street corner. Nope, nope. You know. And so- and that's how I feel they're going to wind up coming back to him anyway. Because right. at the end of the day, Frank ain't trying to sell his stuff on the street. I mean, I uh, I think they all did each other a favor. Because technically, they could have been hard on Frank. Look at the amount of money Frank has cost Kevin V in just in their bar over the years. Right. Right. And yeah. d- doing it a third was fair and just. But now, in traditional form, I've seen so many dudes who are these used car salesmen when they do something right, they think they're supposed to be getting paid like they're running a damn hedge fund. And that's what Frank has done. <laughs> Frank, yeah. Frank, he's running a hedge fund all of a sudden. And um, that's going to come to a head. And 
I'm gonna give the first question to you on this next story, T Stream. Larry, this one was funny, man. What about <laughs> Carl? Carl. <laughs> <on the> <laughs> Oh man, Carl is on his first day on the force, and that is David, ladies and gentlemen, from Scandal. That's David, the guy that's driving with Carl, his partner, was David from Scandal. And he's teaching Carl the ropes as a police officer, his version of the ropes, which is be a lazy cop. That's his version of the ropes. And he his tells Carl, the ropes is stay alive. He's right, basically like, say, do yeah. not get out of the yeah. car and you can't go home every day to your family. He was like, don't get out. Yeah. yeah. But little, Carl little wanted to smoke. Yeah. He, 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 want, he, wanted some, he wanted some action. Yeah. yeah he, he wanted, wanted some wanted action. That. Yeah. I mean, from the moment he stepped out to take his morning jog to the, <laughs> to the end of the episode, he wanted, he wanted some action. He was not he was not pleased at all. No. Nah. Uh, and, and the only action. The only action he got was at the end when he was in the bathroom with the girl that was at the bar. But you, you know what's interesting? When they showed his partner over there, and I thought, I actually, I, I really liked the way that Carl, you know, spoke up for himself at the end of the at the end of that uh that shift when his dude was about to go home, and Carl was like, "Look, man, we didn't do jack shit all day. We stayed in the car. You're telling me about being a partner and being loyal and all. He's like, I'm trying to be a good partner, so I didn't say shit. But it's your turn to be a good partner now and go buy me a damn drink after my first day on the job. So I, I like the way he spoke up for himself. But when they were over at the bar, it made me realize the reason why this dude may not ever get out of the car is because he might realize he is a freaking madman. Yeah. He might be one of them dudes that's a straight-up lunatic, and if they if you let him <laughs> off the leash – He's gonna go crazy because the way he was he was straight chugging that whole pitcher of beer mm -hmm. and then took that chick to the bathroom. Come on, son. That's not that's not some normal everyday square biz dude. Yeah, that's, that's not the typical car. geek. No, no, and not only not only is he married, ladies and gentlemen, but he chugged that beer and went in there and he must have popped the Molly, popped the Viagra, because this is what happened to him. That <laughs> That girl said, my vagina killed him. <laughs> <laughs> this brother came and went at the same time. Yeah, man. And, and it, it takes a whole lot to do that. But I thought that that dynamic between them is funny. And Larry, I can easily see that dynamic turning into something that's going to be a benefit to them both. Can't you right. see that coming down the pipeline? Well, he's a known quantity. He's not like some unknown actor. So they're planning on keeping him around. They don't bring somebody like that in there for a cameo. Right, you know? right, right. So and, but as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh, he's going to be around for a minute. Oh, yeah. He's definitely going to be around, we think. Uh, he didn't die in this scene, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to just let y'all know they did carry him out on a stretcher. But we did hear... When they had him hooked up to the monitor, we did hear it flatline, but I don't think he's dead. I don't think I don't think her stuff that good. No way. I mean, well, look at it. Cool butt though. It, huh? Oh, wait a minute. Not Larry. Oh, that's right. Larry like him tiny. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> I like thin girls. There you go. Larry, Larry like him nice and thin. So there you have it. <laughs> we, ladies and gentlemen, we got another. It was another crazy. And, and this is the one that I see being diabolical, Larry. <laughs> this shit right here with the Malkovich brother. Oh, God. that dude's just out of control, man. So he's married to the redhead Gallagher. He doesn't have a job. Okay. And the redhead Gallagher is trying to be responsible now. You know, he done got married. He said, we need to earn some money. And an old boy right here in the picture, just like, you know, he couldn't even tell this guy. This is an interview, ladies and gentlemen. This is an interview. <laughs> he couldn't tell this guy his social security. He gave him three parts of the social security number and thought that that was a social security number. Three yeah. Then, he was making it up at that. He was just like, oh he was like, God. okay, just bring it to me later. Right. The, bro the, the guy asked him if someone needs to return some equipment back, what would you say to them? My man's going to say, I would say, well, how did you steal it? Why is there blood covered all over this saw? It was. This is an interview, people. This is a damn interview. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. 
What the, he, what the? he he straight threw me off when I first saw him. I was like, mm, he's a little different. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah. different. He's very but different. He straight jacked that dude's. He jacked that dude's tow truck and went over there and took that there whole is. dumpster full of stuff. Yeah. So his his boyfriend, his husband, is working at um a shop where they take food that has expired and they throw it away. And so instead of working for them. This this guy right here, Mokovich, decides he's going to steal a tow truck. He's going to go and get those dumpsters, and he's going to make money by selling those to chefs. And that's exactly what he did. But, of course, hmm. his husband is not happy about that. Larry, I, I see I see a crack in the armor with them. Something's got to give. Who's going to give? Oh man, it's hard to tell because you know those two will go at it. They will fight. They'll break each other's bones. Hell, they'll shoot each other, and then they'll be in bed again later on that night. So yeah, yeah, you know that's true. That's true. That was hard to say. I I don't see the Malkovich dude getting a square of his job. He's going back to he's going back to some. The only way that I think those two would break up is if what's his name went and robbed somebody and got caught and got sent back to jail. Cause then I think that then I think dude would just be like, man, I'm done. We did. I told you to stay. I told you to stay up out of jail. I told you to get a square job. And instead you want to do some dumb stuff and go back to jail. I think that might be the only thing that breaks him. Yeah. I, I could agree. Something like something along that line would probably be the thing that set them apart. But you can tell that, the husband right here is getting more and more frustrated because at the end of the show, Malkovich was jacking off to a Benjamin Franklin and then throwing the wash the dollar bills on top of him as he was doing run up, sit up punches. Right. <laughs> Bruh. I, Larry, that's going to end explosively. <sighs> you mark my words. I don't know how, but it's going to be something crazy. And then there was one more story I wanted to cover. This thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> I knew something was up when they threw that, when 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 Lip came home and that window was broken and he went in the house and no one had stolen anything. Yeah. I was yep. like, okay, something's weird because if somebody would have broke into that house, they, they had all that, he had all that paint and all that painting equipment and all the construction mm -hmm. stuff that you've been with. They didn't take anything. I was like, something's off with that. And you got lead, you got all kinds of stuff in there. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Lip. And they live um, in a black neighborhood in Chicago. And this lady right here pushing her dog is the one who's responsible for throwing this trash in his yard, throwing the brick through his window, because Lip and his, his baby mama have tried to make their house look as nice as possible. And the black people in this community don't want the house looking nice because they're afraid it's going to raise the price of their taxes, raise the price of the properties. And a lot of Anglo-Saxons have been moving into this community, basically taking over, which is why you see at the end of this episode, Lip decides to make his house look bad by spray painting go home gentrifier and the wife <laughs> spray painting a penis leaking sperm on the other side. <laughs> T Street, what it was going through leaking. your was mind? Hurting. What was going man. through your mind when you saw all that squirting and leaking? Man, I I, I tell you, it was uh there was a lot of shockers in this episode. <laughs> I mean, you know, this this was one hell of a uh breakout episode to uh to to, to break me in to this uh to to this show here. I you know. I'm looking, you know, I'm sitting up on my couch like, what the, huh? Oh. I'm, you know, a lot of this stuff I'm looking at, like, hold on. You know, from the, from the very beginning, it, it, and, and I think that's what, I think that's what, what, what caught me because it was a lot of strange and unorthodox stuff going on. I, I wasn't aware what, what to expect anyway, because I don't, I don't even think I've seen any previews or anything for the show. Uh, I just cut it on and started watching it. And, uh, you know, when I when I see things like that, I'd be like, hold up. What? <laughs> Hell oh, no. man. If you think this is bad, you have to go back to the earlier seasons. Oh, my get, God, man. No, I, I, I can only with. imagine. I could, dude, I can only imagine what to expect. This is it. 
this episode has has definitely set a track for me to to get my mind prepared. Get right. Get yourself yeah. together, brother. Because it, it, it don't look like it's, it's no holes bars on this one. <laughs> and no, it ain't. They don't hold no no punches on this one. And Larry, what you think about my girl Debbie? Whole thing. She's basically trying to live through her child vicariously. Her daughter, she had this big to do about a princess party because that's what she wanted. The daughter didn't care for the princess party. The daughter wanted the Dracula outhouse. You know, the daughter could have called up T Streams and had a good time. That's what yeah, they could have yeah. done. They could have called up T Stream. He would have rolled up there with his equipment. The daughter would have been straight. And you can kind of see that there is a there's a rift between Debbie and the daughter because Debbie has this vision of what she wants her daughter's life to be like, and the daughter wants something else. How do you think that's going to end, Larry? Yeah, the daughter, the daughter, when you when you listen to her and see the way she responds to certain things, she seems like a straight up Gallagher, like you would expect yeah. a Gallagher to be. Mm-hmm. And Debbie doesn't want that. She wants she Debbie wants what 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 she Debbie wants her little girl to have to want what she wanted, which is to yeah, have she, like yeah. her little princess party and be a little pretty cute girl. And 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 her daughter's not like that, you nope. know. And did you see when the Malkovich popped in to the princess party and brought her some toy guns and she just bounced? She was she was like the, the hell with this princess party. I'm going with Uncle. Uncle Malkovich with these guns. Yeah, I'm not even sure they were toy guns. They might have been real. No, they had like those plastic caps on the end, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the plastic caps on the end. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen Shameless, this Check is one. Of the, this is one of the most binge-worthy shows you've been yeah, missing yeah. out on. It took Larry, it took uh, my friend Angela, and it took Crystal to convince me to watch it. And once I watched the season, I was hooked ever since. Get on it. All right, and, if you, and if you get enough, if you watch all of this and you still need more, go check on, I think it's on Netflix or, or Hulu, one of them. You can watch the, the original version, which is the UK version. Right. And yep. they have like 17 seasons on the UK version. It's good too. Mm. Same so- cast. No, 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 it's, no. It's, a, it's the original cast from Britain and the and the father. Woo! The father in that show, boy, he is a he is as big a mess as, as Frank is. Mm. Wow. 